The Calvary road for Jesus was an intentional road. Jesus chose to die on the cross, knowing fully what the cross would feel like, knowing that he would be separated from the Father. He chose it for you and I. Oftentimes, we, we want to wait for the glory in order to believe. But Jesus says, you believe, then you will see God's glory in your life, in your situations. So, take a decision today. I'm going to believe. I'm going to believe and trust in God. Because Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says, it is impossible to please God without faith. Then it says, Anyone who comes to, the, comes to God must believe, underline must believe, that he exists. Then, that he rewards those who seek him earnestly. There are two facets of faith you see there. One is faith in the existence of God. The second part is faith in the goodness of God. Many people have faith in the existence of God. I believe all the people sitting here, they don't have big struggle in having the faith in existence of God. But many of you have struggle in believing the goodness of God because that comes personally. That, that is to believe that God is good and he's going to reward me as an individual, no matter what I have done in my life, because of what Jesus did on the cross, I'm going to receive his goodness, care of Jesus Christ. I think we need to have these two facets of faith in our life. One is believing in the existence of God. By the way, even demons believe that. That doesn't make us very special. But what makes us special is to believe in the goodness of God, that He is good to me, and He's going to bless me. Do you believe that? Praise God. So we are on a great series called The Calvary Road. Today, I'm going to continue on that. The topic today is the palace of rejection. You know, we have been thinking about the last week of Jesus Christ, the different journeys he took on up to the cross. So we'll be finishing next week on Easter Sunday with the last sermon on this series. But Every step Jesus took in his last few days, there are wisdoms and uh, you know, encouragements we can get from the story of Jesus Christ. So for today's talk, I just want to read a passage from the Bible. It's in uh, John's Gospel, chapter 18. I'm going to read from verse 28. Then the Jews led Jesus from Caiaphas to the palace of the Roman governor. Now it was the early morning, and to avoid ceremonial uncleanness, the Jews did not enter the palace. They wanted to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and asked, what charges are you bringing against this man? So I want to just stop there. Look at the hypocrisy of religion. They are bringing an innocent man to be crucified, but they externally they wanted to keep themselves clean by not going into the palace of a gentile they thought that if they stepped into Pilate's palace they'll get unclean but they never thought that they are crying out for the blood of an innocent man that they didn't that didn't make them unclean see our God looks at our heart not what you do externally Praise God. What charges are you bringing against this man? Pilate asked. If he were not a criminal, they replied, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said, take him yourself and judge him by your own law. 
but we have no right to execute anyone the jews objected this happened so that the words jesus had spoken indicating the kind of death he was going to die would be fulfilled pilate then went inside the palace summoned jesus and asked him are you the king of the jews is that your own idea jesus asked or did others talk to you about me am i a jew pilate replied it was your people and your chief priests who handed you over to me what is it that you have done jesus said my kingdom is not from this world not of this world if it were my servant would fight to prevent my arrest by the jews but now my kingdom is from another place are you a king then said pilate jesus answered you are right in saying i am a king in fact for this re- reason i was born and for this i came into the world to testify to the truth everyone on the side of the truth listens to me what is truth what is truth see pilate is sitting on the throne in order to pronounce a judgment but he has no clue what is truth this is the picture of the world but what he didn't realize that truth was standing in front of him his hands chained but he didn't see the truth because jesus said i am the truth and he was standing right in front of him it can happen to us the truth can stand in front of us but we can still miss the truth pilate asked with this he went he didn't even wait for an answer from jesus he said what is truth then he just turned away he went out, out again to the jews and said i find no basis for a charge against him but it is your cust- custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the passover do you want me to release the king of the jews they shouted back no not him give us barabbas now barabbas had taken part in a rebellion then pilate took jesus and had him flogged his idea was no he will get jesus beaten up in a brutal way and will bring him back and show the jewish people out of their you know sympathy for him probably they let him go that was his plan because usually for capital punishment punishment nobody gets beaten because they are going to be killed but in jesus case it was pilate's idea to have him flogged so that at least the people will say that okay now it's enough release him and he got him flogged the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put in put it on his head they clothed him in purple robe and went up to him again and again saying hail king of the jews and they struck him in his face one small pilot came out and said to the jews look i am bringing him out to you to let you know that i find no basis for a charge against him when jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and purple robe pilot said to him here is the man as soon as the chief priest and and their officials saw him they shouted crucify crucify but pilate answered you take him and crucify him as for me i find no basis for a charge against him the jews insisted we have a law and according to that law he must die because he claimed to be the son of god when pilate heard this he was even more afraid and he went back inside the palace where you where do you come from he asked jesus but jesus gave him no answer do you refuse to speak to me pilate said don't you realize that i have power either to free you or to crucify you and jesus answered you would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above you can see a stark contrast as you visualize the picture of jesus standing in trial before pilate pilate is sitting on a throne pilate appointed by caesar as the governor of judea and jesus son of god appointed savior appointed by god standing in trial his hands chained but look at their attitude pilate sitting on the throne he looks confused and bible says he he was afraid he was fearful and he is asking what is truth he is sitting on a th- on a throne 
without knowing what is truth confused fearful but my jesus standing there in trial his hands chained but he is confident he is clear minded and he was the embodiment of truth he is standing tall before pilate let me tell you jesus in chains is million times better than a pilate on a throne praise god and he proved that for the first time probably jesus entered a palace that is this scene by the way jesus was born king 33 years ago perhaps this is the same place where the magi ended up you know many scholars believe that you know pilate he was in the resident of uh, jerusalem his palace was in caesarea but during festival time he used to come to jerusalem in order to oversee the the things in jerusalem and when he comes he used to take the palace of herod the herod the great built a big palace there if that is true it was the same palace the magi ended up and asked the king where is the one born the king jesus was born the king but he never stepped into a palace before that for the first time he is standing in a palace like a criminal he was rejected as i was preparing this message i knew that all of us in our life have gone through rejection at some point there is not even a single person who can say that i have never faced rejection so i asked god what is that you want me to convey to the people to comfort them three things the holy spirit dropped into my mind all of a sudden i just want to read it to you rejection rejection is only for a season and doesn't last forever it is temporary do not dwell it on permanently rejection is one of god's refining process refining your motives your intentions do not take it personally rejection some rejections are to eliminate distraction and to avoid derailment from your purpose do not ignore it if it is for you please take it to heart rejection is not forever our lord jesus christ faced rejection not only here in this particular time as he began his ministry we know that the people in his hometown they rejected him they rejected him and jesus knew that it was according to god's plan and purpose we are all the product of rejection we are all the products of rejection you may not agree with me as i said this but we are why did i say that many years ago we were all rejected you didn't get it we were rejected and ejected by a womb was that only me or <laughs> and what was our natural response to that what did we do cry it's okay to cry but we stopped and we got over that rejection didn't we <laughs> or did anybody you know as the womb rejected clung on to the umbilical cord no 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 i want <laughs> no we just came out the womb rejected from a place of confinement into the vastness and to a world of possibility and that we are enjoying today and we are all a product of rejection we cried hey 
we got over that. Again, one more rejection is awaiting us. Don't worry. It's going to be for our good. At some point in our life, our body is going to reject our spirit. That is called death. What will happen? We will be translated into a world of eternity. From a world of pain and difficulty, the next rejection is going to translate us into a world of eternity. So don't worry. Rejection is not always bad in itself. But it matters how we handle it. As Charles Swindon said, life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. Life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. Some people, they make a mess out of every situation. See, um, a new salesman, he faced rejection everywhere because he didn't sell anything. He thought of seeking the advice of a successful senior experienced salesman. And he went and shared his story. Hey, I'm rejected everywhere. The older salesman said, you know, I've been hit on my head. I've been thrown out of the door. I've been called all bad names. But I am never rejected. It is how you perceive it. Not all the rejections are rejection. Some of the rejections are God closing doors for you so that he can open a better door for you. As I was sitting here this morning, Alan Fraser came and whispered into my, into my uh, ears. He said, our setbacks are God's setup for our future. And he was mentioning Joseph's story. He didn't know what I was about to preach. If you face rejection either from a relationship or at workplace or whatever, you name them, it could be God redirecting you to a greater plan and purposes. Because God is always good. I was looking into my own life. I have faced rejection. But at the end of the day, I ended up with better things. Whether it's relationship, family, job, or whatever. I ended up having better things. That includes my wife. By the way, I have only one wife. <laughs> and my wife knows that if I am rejected, I'll get better. I'll, I'll get better stuff. So she's never going to reject me. <laughs> As Jesus faced rejection, Let's see how he handled it, how he navigated himself through that situation. My first point today is he faced rejection with a right conviction. Jesus faced rejection with a right conviction. He thought right. He thought right. Rejection couldn't make a dent on his conviction of who he was. He was sure that rejection was according to God's plan and purpose in his life. Now, one time Jesus asked his disciples, you know, haven't you read that the stone the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone? Who Jesus was talking about? He was talking about himself. He knew that one day the Jewish people are going to reject him. The government is going to reject him. But he knew, he was con convinced that that is not the end of the story. That stone which he himself, he was referring to, is going to become a, the chief cornerstone of the church. Rejection was temporary. He knew, the, he knew, he knew it very well. When we face rejection... Realize who you are in Christ Jesus. Realize who you belong to. 
Jesus knew that. He was fully convinced that the father was still in charge of his life. When we face rejection, we tend to have negative thoughts and mentality in our life. We tend to think you know, in, in a negative way. Our inner voice becomes critical of ourselves and of other people. Am I right? When we face rejection, we begin to blame ourselves and other people who rejected us. Don't take things personally. We feel sometimes worthless and we become resentful. But as Jesus was standing in trial, chained, beaten up, he didn't have a victim mentality. He was standing there like a king because he was convinced and he had the right conviction that everything that was happening in his life was according to God's plan and purpose. Jesus faced rejection with right conviction. In other words, he thought right. He thought right through the rejection. Hey, we need to think right when we face rejection. My second point, Jesus faced rejection with good confession. In other words, he talked right through rejection. Exact wording you can read in the writing of Paul. When Paul was writing to Timothy, and when he was charging Timothy to fight a good fight, then he said this, in the sight of God who gives life to everything, and of Christ Jesus who, while testifying before Pil Pontius Pilate, made the good confession that you read in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 13. Jesus made a good confession as he was standing in trial, rejected by the whole world. He made the right confession. What was his confession? When Pilate asked him questions, Jesus remained silent for a while. To provoke him, Pilate said, don't you realize that I have the power and authority either to release you or to crucify you? Jesus opened uh, his mouth and confessed, unless that authority was given from my father above, you wouldn't have any authority over me. Meaning, Jesus made a good confession that my father is on my side. Whatever situation I face today, whatever things I go through, my God, my father is in charge of my life. And he declared that with his mouth. What do you say when you are rejected? We end up saying all the wrong comments. We become brutal on ourselves. We go for a pity party. But Jesus confessed who he was. He confessed before Pilate that it is my father who is in charge, not the Roman Caesar or his governor. Jesus made con right confession, good confession, rejection. We need to be mindful of what we say because death and life are on our tongue. You can decide. You know, our confession is so powerful because when God created Adam and he gave him a responsibility of na naming all the animals, all the creatures. And the Bible says, whatever Adam called became their name. Whatever he named them became their names. And there's a great truth we can get from that. Whatever you say will come to pass. If you believe and confess, it will come to pass. 
you got to rename certain things that you have already named. Certain things you have called impossible, you got to name possible through Christ Jesus. If you name yourself worthless, you need to rename unworthy through Christ Jesus. Whatever you call will become the reality. Jesus faced rejection with good confession. He talked right through rejection. Hey, rejection ha can happen any time in our life. But it matters what you say, what you declare when rejection happens. I'm not saying, you know, to deny the facts in your life. Certain realities are realities. They are the facts, but they are not the truth. I'm not saying to deny the fact. All I am saying is to declare truth of your sit over your situation. There's a huge difference. What is the truth? This is the truth. Declare the word of God over your situations. Don't worry about the facts. God can turn the situation for your good. So Jesus faced rejection with right conviction and with good confession. And the last point is with a great conduct, meaning he walked right through rejection. When Jesus was rejected in Nazareth, in his hometown, that you read in chapter 4 of Luke 29 to 30, they got up, the people in the synagogue in, in Nazareth, his hometown, they got up, drove him out of the town and took him to the edge of the hill on which the town was built in order to throw him off the cliff. But the next verse says, he, Jesus, walked right through the crowd. Jesus walked right through the rejection. I'm, I'm, I'm taking that word in a different meaning. Jesus, as there was a hostile crowd around him, he walked right through them. Hey, when rejection happens, we need to walk right through the rejection. See, when rejection happens, there is always a tendency to take wrong paths. We end up taking wrong paths. Focus on where you are going. Jesus was sure what his ministry was. People's opinion of him didn't let him waver from his mission. When Jesus faced rejection, he walked right. He had a great conduct. He conducted himself well when he faced rejection. He's a good example for us because the Bible says in Hebrew chapter 12, and let's run with perseverance the race mark for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. If you are weary because of the rejection that you have faced, fix your eyes on Jesus Christ. As he was standing in trial before a governor appointed by Caesar, he conducted himself and he's, though he was in chains, he stood there like a king. Pilate is asking, he, asking him, you are a king because he behaved like a king. Even when we are on a throne, we can behave like a slave. But Jesus, standing in trial, brutally beaten, it was a time for him to feel unworthy, but he's standing tall there and Pilate had no other option but to ask him, you are a king. 
let our circumstance not define who we are it is the truth of the word of god rejection helps us to pursue our best instead of settling for good rejection helps you and me to pursue the best instead of settling for something good end of the story pilate came to a position where he had to choose either or either to keep his throne by rejecting jesus or accept jesus and lose his throne he went for the former he thought of keeping his throne rejecting jesus christ we don't know the whole story but some of the tradition says within short time of rejecting jesus he lost his throne within a few years tradition says he committed suicide today the option is before us either you can sit on the throne or set aside and let jesus take the throne of your life decision is ours can we bow our head for a minute